So my name is Kenji and I go to UT HSC, University of Tennessee Health Science Center. Um, I'm a D1 and I chose this school basically because at the end it was because of like realistic um, reasons. It was because it was way cheaper. It's an in-state school. Um, so the tuition was much, much cheaper than the other option that I had. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> Awesome, I can go next. I'm Madeline, I'm currently a D1 at Texas A&M University College of Dentistry. Um, my story is similar to Hunji's. Um, it's in-state tuition. Obviously, Texas has very um, great in-state tuition as well. So that was a big plus and I'm a Texas resident. So I wanted to stay here, but I also have a lot of ties to the school. It used to be Baylor College of Dentistry and I've had multiple family members go there. So, um, and I grew up in Dallas. And so it's based in Dallas as well. So that was just all kind of signs that I was meant to go there and yeah. Hi everyone, my name's Rachel. I'm a D1 at the VCU School of Dentistry located in Richmond, Virginia. I am originally from Florida and I went to the University of Florida for undergrad. So I am an out of state student. Um, but that didn't really deter me from choosing VCU. I chose VCU due to the amazing amount of clinical opportunities that we have here. And so I'd be happy to elaborate more on that later, um, but just wanted to say, hey, and thank you for having me. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Sam. Uh, I am a D1 at the NYU College of Dentistry. Um, I went to undergrad in, uh, at Montclair State University, which is in New Jersey. So I'm kind of familiar with the area. I'm not too far from here. Um, I chose NYU, honestly, mainly all because of the uh, clinical experience, uh, more specifically the outreach programs. Uh, I'm very passionate about um, equitable health healthcare um, and providing services for underserved communities. Um, and that's something that really attracted me about NYU is their commitment to that. Um, and having those outreach programs during your first two years um, and then having global outreach programs your uh, third and fourth years uh, was something that I was very interested in. So that's something I uh, really, uh, or something that really attracted me to NYU. Awesome, thank you guys. So to kick it off, um, we have some starter questions, but if anyone has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself or drop them in the chat. Um, just to start us off, what was the transition like for you from undergrad um, going into dental school? Okay, so I'll go first. Um, so from undergrad to the classes itself is not like hard. I felt like my undergrad classes were harder. Like the professors made it harder. There was like so much detail, but I'm pretty sure you guys like heard about it and uh, maybe the other panelists will um, agree with me. It's just the amount of material that's like you're bombarded with in such a short amount of time. So like you really have to, you feel, and you feel like there's nothing that you have to do. You feel like you have so much time because for us, we don't have quizzes, we don't have assignments, like it's just exams. So you they just give you the material and then you do the exams. So during that time, it's up to you to study the material. So um, you really have to learn how to manage your time better, like so much more than your undergrad and that was like the hardest transition for me and also like the lab stuff like you don't really have a lot of that in undergrad like so um the hands-on part of dentistry like it it's really hard at first but as you do it you get used to it so i feel like that was the biggest two transitions for me um how to like relearning to manage your time better to like fit the dentistry schedule and like learning how to do all the hand stuff that's required. So I think that's about it for me. Yeah, definitely. I can go next. Um, so I actually am a non-traditional student. I had three years in between undergrad and dental school. Um, so I had a different career. I was a teacher. Um, and although I had kept going to school, I was getting my master's in education and those classes are just more Socratic seminar and research based and writing papers. So the transition was definitely a little bit harder for me. I had to take in biochem in five years. And so that was a little bit of um, 
a wake up call the first month of school when we reviewed all of undergrad sciences in four weeks at Texas A&M. We do a really quick class and I've already been through with one of my classes because that was, you know, we reviewed every single science class that we had um, from undergrad in four weeks. And, um, and then we were over with the class. So like Hunji talked about, like it's drinking from a fire hose. Um, and it came at us so fast, but I would say that you have that initial shock and then you build really good habits during that time period of that initial first shock. So you create these habits and the discipline of having that habit every single day kind of carries you through and it's able, it's how you're able to continue studying as much as you can without getting burned out. And so, although it was harder and had you kind of talked about this, the amount is harder and um, you adjust very quickly. Mm -hmm. I can go next or Sam, it doesn't matter. Um, but for me, the transition, and I knew this going into it, was going to be moving to a new city and a bigger city. Um, but that adjustment was pretty quick on, and VCU is a huge like credit to that. Um, the first six weeks of our D1 year were spent taking strictly gross anatomy, dental anatomy, and neuroanatomy, and that's it. Um, because our faculty really wants us to perform well in those core courses since they are worth so many credits and they're such a solid foundation for the rest of our D1 year and years to come. And so my whole class did very well in those classes and it really, really helped with the adjustment. It wasn't like a giant load all at once. Um, it was a nice steady like ease into our curriculum that we're currently in now, so. Yeah, I would agree with uh, the other panelists. Um, I think so I also took a gap year um, after undergrad. So having that transition from working full time where like you work a nine to five job and then once you log off, you kind of don't do work at home. Um, that luxury doesn't happen in dental school. <laughs> um, so that transition that you, um, you're you constantly doing work um, took a little bit of a toll on me and took a minute for me to transition back into. Um, but I think Madeline said it perfectly. Like, you know, you develop all these habits from, you know, getting bombarded with all these, you know, with all this information, all this new information that you're um, being thrown at, or the, all this information that's being thrown at you. Um, you develop habits um, to, you know, know what's working for you. Um, and that's definitely something very important is that, um, you know, it's all about trial and error. You know, if something doesn't work for you, um, try something else. Uh, use that time to develop those learning habits um, to find out what works for you. I, I knew like the way that I took notes in undergrad completely does not work for me um, with how I take my notes now in uh, dental school. Like I'm very heavily dependent on my iPad and I don't think I can like get through dental school without my iPad. Um, so that's something I learned and uh, that helped me transition into dental school. Um, and then like Rachel said, moving into a new city can be very intimidating, uh, very hard. Um, so my advice is take up, you know, roommates um, and, you know, that'll be like your first little group of friends and you kind of walk through this journey together. Okay, thank you for those answers. Our next question has something to do with what Hyunji mentioned earlier and it's, how did you adapt to working with your hands? Was it hard at first or did you pick everything up quickly? Okay, for me, I definitely thought I was going to because I always had kind of pride in like working with my hands, like making stuff, like just um, doing stuff with my hands. So I thought it would be an easy transition. Like I thought all those things would come naturally to me, which didn't. And um, at first, like, you get, I got kind of angry, like I had, because I had gone into um, all those things like lab work, thinking that I was going to do well, um, because it didn't come to me naturally, I got frustrated and it is frustrating because it's hard. Um, it's hard, like it's new, like you've never done it before. And um, the professors will all, you know, like they're not trying to say like, um, you're terrible. They're just trying to help you to become competent. And, um, but the cool thing is that like the first thing, like the first time you try, like it's really hard and you feel like you're never gonna get it. But like the more you do it, 
um, you get better. Like even with wax ups, that's the first thing I'm pretty sure like everyone does. Uh, wax ups of the tooth, um, and uh, like we started prepping like an operative lab. Um, we did class preps, and all of those. At first, you're like. I can't do this. I'm not going to be able to do this, but um, you can't go in with that mindset that you have to go in with the mindset that like, you're not, it's your first time. You've never done it before. Um, you're going to get better with time. Um, and it definitely comes with practice. That's what I learned. Um, at first, like nobody's going to do well. There's going to be like one or two people in the class that are like really good, but like they, they're either really artistic or like they've done it before. Like they worked in like a, like a dental lab setting or like an office setting before so they've had experience so like don't be discouraged like it's gonna be hard but you, you, got, you got it yeah i can kind of speak to that a little bit more um i did get six months of experience in a dental office as a dental assistant um so when it came to like pouring alginates we got to do that um and doing impressions i've had experience in that whereas like the waxing and preps i'd never done um, I'm pretty artistic, so the waxing came easy for me, but what caught me off guard was the preps. I really struggled with them in the beginning, and that's drilling, and that's pretty much what you do as a dentist, so when I wasn't good at it immediately, I, like, like Angie said, like, you know, you kind of beat yourself down, and I think it's just really important to not compare yourself in lab. I think that's the biggest thing I've learned is like your next, you want to be friends with them and you're all there doing the same thing. And like, someone's going to be better than you, but someone's also going to be worse than you. So help the people who you can help. Um, but also like have grace with yourself and don't be too hard on yourself because it does come eventually. It does take practice, um, but it will come and professors are there to help you get to where you need to be as well. Yeah, definitely. Pigging piggybacking off of that too, never be afraid to ask for help. There's always those people who are super intimidated by the faculty or they see classmates doing better than them at this or that. And they're intimidated to ask for help. I'm definitely was one of those people, but I learned very quickly um, that you're only gonna get better if you ask for advice and keep working at it and keep working at it. Um, it did not come naturally to me when we started you could just feel the frustration across our whole sim lab um, but we're definitely getting better as we go and it's crazy to think that in just a few years like we're going to be doing this in half the amount of time that we're spending on a prep right now yeah no I second everything that was already said um, you know something that's very very important is definitely ask for help be curious even if you don't know what the tool's name is ask about it um, you know, it, it's just going to come with time. Um, it didn't kind of like at first I was struggling with it with the wax ups and, but you know, with the wax ups, it really does help you learn your anatomy. Um, and it, it'll come, uh, like it, it's going to take time, but always listen uh, to what advice is given to you by your TAs or by your, uh, professors, um, and just be patient with it. It's very important to be patient. It, you're going to get easily frustrated, but it's important to be patient. Thank you for those great answers. Uh, so you've all spoken a bit about like hands on work and even like book work, but have you gotten to apply any of those with like interacting with patients? Um, interacting, did you say interacting with patients? Have you been able to act? Uh, for me, no, like, um, no interactions with patients just yet. Um, I think in our school, like if you have like connections to upperclassmen, um, D1s are able to go into clinical uh, clinic and assist. Uh, but I personally don't have any connections yet, so I haven't been able to do that. But it is definitely something that I'm interested in doing. Um, but for me personally, no, I don't have much to say on that one. At um, TAMCOD, we don't actually get to work with actual patients until the spring, same kind of similar situation where you have those um, horizontal groups and you can kind of work with your specific group in, in clinic when you have free time and you can dental assist. Um, but we did get to go in each other's mouths and they said that was our first patient. So they we have something called IRD, or IPD and it's integrated practice industry. And they're basically teaching us like how to sit correctly, ergonomics, how to hold the 
um, hand piece, how to hold the mirror and sort of get that first jitters of like being in someone's mouth kind of out. So that was nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a D1, we haven't really gotten our hands on actual patients yet other than our mannequin, which I still need a name for my mannequin. So if anyone has ideas, let me know. Um, but yeah, my mannequin is my favorite patient right now, but we will be able to start probing on each other in just a few weeks. And then we will be doing our stab lab, I think in January when we start um, rotations. So it's pretty quick here at VCU. I'm not sure how it is at other schools, but I will definitely be under supervision of faculty as well as my um, GPG group. And I won't be performing actual procedures like solo until D3 year. Yeah, same thing uh, at NYU. We haven't interacted with any patients yet. Uh, usually in the spring semester is when we would start with like our outreach programs and we would go to like schools and do like promotion programs um and you know work with uh kids and adolescents so those would be usually our first um you know set of patients you could say um and then not until uh the spring semester of your d2 is when you uh technically get into the clinic um and start interacting with your patients all right so um the next question we have lined up for you guys is how is the course load and what are types of courses that you're taking right now. And uh, since we're about halfway through, let's start uh, with Sam this time and do the reverse order. Um, so honestly, the course load was pretty, pretty heavy. Um, I'm taking 26 credits, um, but keep in mind, we started back in July um, and we had a like a three week break in August. Um, so we started out with classes um, like biochem, uh, embryology, um, ethics, uh, just some of the basic courses. Um, and then we also started dental anatomy. Uh, over the summer, we only did didactics. So we kind of were just uh, on Zoom for those lectures. Uh, they were they were pretty heavy. Um, and we were we would have class from, you know, uh, 10 a.m. I would say until like four or 6 p.m. and then you would just kind of try to get through your notes, uh, try to like um, go back to recorded lectures, uh, get any missing pieces that you have and study as much as you can. So over the summer, it was pretty heavy because a lot of those courses finished by the end of uh, the summer session. However, we still had like three courses that rolled over into the fall semester. Um, and we're actually finishing that last like one of those courses literally on Monday, next Monday. Um, other than that, we start like a like a whole new set kind of in September. So we started having neck anatomy, uh, we started radiology um, and we started our labs. Uh, so it, it is pretty heavy. However, it's all doable. Um, you just have to find your groove. You have to know how to prioritize your time. And my biggest advice would be that you need to get comfortable with the idea that you will no longer be in control of your course load or like you will no longer be in control of like um you know how much you're going to be able to do uh just focus and prioritize on what's coming up so if i know i have like dental anatomy exam next week and then another like let's say uh histology exam in two weeks i kind of uh, take turns on studying between those two classes, but giving more time to dental anatomy and then switch off the after the exam um, and prioritize two classes. Um, that's just, um, yeah, that's me. Yeah, I'd have to agree that uh, my course load is about the same, roughly 30 credits for just this fall semester, but it's so doable. And the way VCU has structured it for us has made it super manageable. Like I'm already done with gross and I'm already done with neuro and I don't have to worry about keeping up with those lectures or exams anymore. And now I can focus on immunology and clinical skills and perio and all the other classes that um, were introduced later on in our fall semester. So the way that they break down our curriculum has really, really helped us um, adapt to this 30 credit load of a semester. Um, but yeah, finding your groove and finding the right people to study with. Um, your study group is not necessarily going to be like your roommates or your friend group. For me, luckily it is. Um, and I'm also a big alone studier. So being able to balance like the time that I need spent alone studying versus staying with a group is something that you'll figure out really quickly as well. 
Definitely. Um, at TAMCOD, we have an integrated curriculum. I don't know if Rachel and Samuels is integrated as well. Um, so I don't have like a standalone dental anatomy class. I'm in intro to restorative dentistry and we do waxing preps, um, dental anatomy. We also do cariology in there um, as well as histology of teeth and tooth development. So it's sort of all encompassing. Um, and that kind of also goes into our anatomy lab. We also do action potentials, muscles, and just sort of all sorts of things. It's not just anatomy. Um, but right now I'm in technically anatomy and we are doing anatomy mixed with cadaver labs, which is really interesting. So if y'all have any questions on that, please let me know. Um, and then we also have immunology and micro, which is sort of a fused class, which is also just kind of interesting and in this integrated curriculum. Um, and, and then we have ethics as well as um, that IPD class, the intro to practicing dentistry and radiology is mixed in with that. Um, so we are kind of in all of the places at once um, and I'm in the same boat. I'm taking 26 credits this semester, but we started in August as well. So I'm taking 22 credits this semester. It's like a little less than the um, other panelists, um, but our, I feel like our school when I see all these students across the nation, like in different schools, I feel like our school is really, um, I don't wanna say like slow, but we're really laid back. I think like, I feel like a different school would take biochem in like three weeks or like four weeks, but then our biochem is like a whole semester long and it's the worth the most credit. So like we have like two main science courses right now, like biochem and um, histology. And then we have like little classes like um, like dental ethics and professionalism. Like we have, I feel like um, UT puts like a lot of emphasis on like ethics and like um, human values and like um, community and stuff. And they try to like really emphasize that. So we have a couple courses on those. Um, and I think a big like dental related course is dental morphology, uh, which is like all about the tooth, like, like anatomy and stuff. And also we have operative dentistry, which um, teaches us about like the instruments used um, when we're operating in the actual like clinical setting. Um, and that's where we do our like operative stuff like preps and like eventually like amalgam you know, like restorations and stuff like that. Um, so like for me, uh, it's really heavy, but it's really doable. And for us, um, one thing that's, I feel like kind of uh, hard is that we take our exams all at once, if you know what I mean. All of our subjects are into like one exam. So we don't really have time to be like, okay, so like our histo exam is on Thursday, so I'm going to study for this until Thursday and then our next exam on biochem. It's not like that. It's like every like three weeks we have an exam that has like all of our main courses. Um, so that's like a little different, but um, it's not bad. Like it's heavy, but it's doable. Um, yeah, so that's me. All right. So given our previous conversations about your course load, you guys are clearly always doing school. Um, and even when you guys have free time, it's like you guys are studying. So our next question is about extracurricular activities. Are you guys involved in any um, clubs per se, per se um, other than being a full-time student? Are there things to be a part of while, you know, studying dentistry? Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of opportunities to be involved in. Um, However, because of COVID, it's a little harder to have events on campus still. Um, but uh, right now, personally, I am involved in my group practice. So I'm uh, like the representative for them and I'm also running for student council. Um, so those are just a couple of ways that I'm involved in school. Um, however, I am planning on joining uh, IDEA um, and I'm also planning on joining um, you know, just a smaller club like uh, the um, uh, orthodontics club. Um, and I'm also planning on doing research at school, um, but I'm trying to like take my time with it. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to like find my groove, um, make sure I'm confident in my time management skills and how much I'm dedicating towards everything before I throw myself into uh, getting too involved. Um, and I do plan, hopefully, eventually, I want to become a peer mentor as well. Um, so that's another way that you can get involved in. 
but you know dental school is very similar to undergrad with like the clubs and organizations that you have so there's plenty of opportunities for you to get involved in and if there's something you're interested in starting uh that's also an option for you to have Um, at VCU, it's pretty easy to get involved. Your whole orientation week, you have different clubs coming in, kind of introducing themselves, their mission, um, providing you with their contact information. So anything that interests you, um, you know who to reach out to, when to reach out to them and that kind of thing, which I really enjoyed during orientation week. It kind of like made the whole mess of starting dental school um, become more fluid. Like I knew I had a support system and literally every aspect. So that was kind of awesome. Um, at VCU, every dental student is um, by default a member of ASDA. It's part of our like tuition and fees um, is we pay that ASDA membership. So ASDA is a huge deal here. Um, I've also joined the Tooth Wigglers, which is a pediatric dental club here at VCU um, and the American Association of Women Dentists. And then I'm also a class officer and my class secretary. Thanks, Rachel. I'm also an ASTA. Um, we're not defaulted in, so we, I chose to join that because they have a lot of fun events and they do a lot of um, dental missions on the weekends. I'm also a part of something called Light. I think it's TAMCOD specific, but it's uh, purely a volunteer, a dental volunteer group. Um, we volunteer for dental clinics on the weekends, but we also do other volunteer work around the city of Dallas. Um, I'm also um, sort of an officer. I'm an honor council, so that. That's been um, recent, but I'm, I don't know the time commitment yet, but I'm also in honor council and um, I'm also in CNDA. Um, and so that's like a weekly meeting, but that's like the Christian Medical and Dental Association as well. Um, so we have weekly meetings as well. I am also part of ASTA. That, I feel like that's like a really big thing here also. Um, Unfortunately, we have to pay separate dues and stuff. It's not like ECU, but I mean, um, it's still all good. Um, and there's like different clubs definitely that will reach out to a lot of us, especially like when you're a D1. Um, so I joined like aesthetics club um, and then we have like a bunch of opportunity for like um, speakers to come and like talk to us. And like, we have a lot of like lunch and learns where like they provide lunch for us. And we just listen to like different, you know, companies or organizations or like dentists that come and speak to us. Um, and I'll, and there's like, yeah, there's like different clubs. Um, there's so many. And there's also fraternities um, that you can join. At our school, I'm not a part of it, but I know like plenty of people who are. Um, and also, like we, I feel like students here like to come together and, and like do other stuff that they're interested in, um, like you know, like sports or just like hanging out together. Um, we have like a huge like class like group me, and like we always communicate with each other to like you know like are you down to like hang and stuff, and we like to do a lot of group activities. Although because of COVID, it is like a little it be um and yeah like i have like a small group who uh like to do bible studies you know if you're like into that um so things like that so i feel like there's like a pretty good like community here like there's plenty of opportunities to do all this stuff professors are always saying hey like come whenever if you want to do any like research and stuff so yeah Awesome. Thank you guys. So um, there's a question in the chat. Um, so switching gears a little bit, but any advice for applications? I'm a junior and applying next cycle. What are things you wish you knew before applying? Um, I can take uh, this one. I think uh, my biggest advice to anyone who's applying is apply as early as you can. Um, you know, I, I believe applications open like May 15th or something like that. Um, I think it's midway through May and then you can start working on it. And then, uh, first day to submit is June 1st. Uh, usually, uh, my advice is definitely get your application ready as soon as you can, uh, re reach out to, uh, professors that you might be interested in asking to be your recommenders and make sure you give them enough time in advance. So I would, I reached out to mine, I believe like April or May. Um, and just make sure you kind of have a timeline laid out. I applied, I was a little later. I applied in September. 
Um, but I wanted to take the DAT after I graduated. So I dedicated um, two and a half months to study. Um, so make sure that you put enough time to study for your DAT, uh, you have it in. If you can, if it's possible to, ta to take your DAT during your undergrad years, I knew I, it wasn't possible for me just between my internship hours and my, um, my curriculum, it, it wasn't gonna be possible for me. So I did it after um, and just be realistic about it. Um, and then I, there's a lot that goes into, you know, how to create a list of schools you're interested in uh, applying to. So make sure you're researching the schools, uh, look at their averages, uh, look at um, if you realistically do see yourself going to that school, living in that city. Um, and I'm, I'm sure the other pan panelists uh, will touch up on that. Uh, but my biggest advice will, would be um, uh, apply as early as possible. Hi, Brian. I see that you're the one that asked the question. So just wanted to shout you out and say hi. Brian went to my undergrad and we were in the same pre-dental group. Um, so Brian, you can always hit me up if you have any extra questions about the application process. Um, but I think in general, the definitely applying early would be a really smart move on your part, especially if you are able to take the DAT um, before you do apply. Um, I know there's a lot of people, especially in our application cycle, um, the DAT was widely unavailable. So for me, I submitted my application before I took the DAT. Um, I definitely would not recommend doing that in case you get a score that maybe you're not super happy with. Um, so definitely having all your materials um, in your application in one spot and then clicking submit as early as you can is going to be super helpful and beneficial in the long run and then definitely like what sam said start asking for letters of rec now um, i used a program called interfolio and i don't know if it's still compatible um, with the application system our year it was um, but you're able to store your letters in there um, so you can start collecting them now and then use them in like june so it's an awesome program and if anyone has more questions about it let me know yeah, I think what Sam and Rachel said were great. Apply early, um, ask for letters of rec. Um, for me, uh, kind of speaking to Rachel a little bit about the DAT, if you don't get the score that you want, um, I was a DAT retaker and obviously I took three gap years. Um, that was not by choice, but um, I only applied twice. I applied when I graduated college and then I had to rethink some things and apply again. And I took time to figure out if this was the path that I really wanted to do. Um, and so I took three years, did a different career and came back to it ultimately. So if you have any questions on that, um, please reach out. I know that's not the ideal situation for any of us, but um, if that ends up happening to you, please let me know because I have lots of advice to give on that end. Um, but I would say uh, being really confident in who you are, don't kind of limit yourself to the averages and the scores um, because again, there's so much more to the application. It's a holistic review. If you are someone who is super involved in outside stuff and you're super passionate about service or volunteerism, um, make sure to talk about that in your personal statement, make sure that shines through. And if the school that you want to go to and are applying to really values that, um, sometimes that can weigh more than some of those scores or some grades even. So I would just say, keep that in mind, but don't bank on it, if that makes sense. So definitely apply um, to a wide range of schools as well. Um, I agree with everything that Sam, Rachel, and Madeline said. Um, and I would also, with, since they all focused on like applying early and stuff, um, I would just like to say that I was also uh, a DAT retaker and also um, I reapplied. I got rejected once. And um, honestly, like just keep in mind that averages are averages. There's like going to be high scores, it's going to be low scores. And um, so don't be too sad that like, unless it's like a really terrible, terrible, terrible like score or something, like you really don't have to worry about it. Um, I would say like you really, one thing that's really important and it shows is um, your confidence 
that you want to be in this path and that you want to do dentistry because I honestly think there wasn't much changed from the first time and the second time in my like scores like my DAT like rose a little bit but like um academically like my GP and stuff like I didn't go back to school during my gap year to like try to raise that but I think one thing that really changed was my personal statement and my interview um so and then I think my attitude had changed. Like before I was like, mm, I don't know if like this is like right for me. I'm just like trying to like do this traditionally. Like I just thought this was the way. Like I think that kind of attitude like reflected on my personal statement and interview as much as I tried to not. So like I think those two are also very, very important. And like starting on your application early because there's a ton of stuff that you have to like put in. I think there's just one thing I would like to add. Um, take as much time as you can with your personal statement. I, I'm like, I, I wanna say I started writing my personal statement in December um, and I just took my time with it. You know, you really, really wanna uh, put in as much thought as you can with it. I had five people read it. Um, I've uh, even used outside resources uh, like of reviewers to read it um and just get as much as advice as you can and try to like look into your why as much as you can and reflect on why this career is for you and why you're so passionate about it um and take your time with it all right thank you for all of those really good pieces of advice i think we're going to ask the last question next if no one else from the audience has any other questions and it's going to be what is an important aspect of choosing a dental school to attend that you wish you knew about before you committed? Um, okay, so this is a little, this is a little hard, um, but I know they always say go into this with, with an open mind. Um, definitely 100% I second that. Go into dental school with an open mind. Don't have a specialization in mind. Um, just be open to everything. Um, but if you do know that there is a specific aspect of dentistry that you're more attracted to, or if you do know that you want to end up in a specific part of this country, um, you know, I would keep that in the back of your mind, uh, research the school, research the grads, where they end up, uh, where they go, and um, just like the rates of who like ends up specializing, if you're interested in that, or the rates of who like goes into public health or who goes um, into general dentistry. Um, I would just like look into that, but that's like something that's like very much in the back of my mind was like on my list, but I kind of didn't look into it, um, but I kind of wish I had, but at the same time, it's like not that big of a deal, but if you do know that there's something that you are more attracted to in dentistry, um, I would just research that. Yeah, this is a hard question. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think that for me, everyone was always telling me, oh, go to the cheapest school. Um, and for me, I did not do that. I did not go to my state school. Uh, and for me, that was the right decision um, because I kind of, like Sam said, I know I want to go into pediatrics and I know I want to do work with special needs and I know I want to do something with public health. I am a NHSC scholarship recipient. Um, I didn't know that when I was applying, but I knew that was something I wanted to apply for and something I was going to continue to apply for if I didn't get it on year one. Um, and so VCU, when they invited me for an interview, I was very shocked because like everyone said, I didn't align with the stats, like it was one of my reach schools, um, but everything kind of fell into place. I had an amazing interview. The faculty that interviewed me was very, very responsive. Um, we have a great relationship now. And so all of those things were things I had never thought about when I was applying, like having a relationship with faculty, um, having a path kind of paved for you with tons of opportunities, more than just what I was aware of in undergrad. Um, and so that was something that really like made me kind of sit back and choose VCU out of the schools that I had um, as options, but I'm glad I'm here. Um, everything does happen for a reason. And just like Sam said, go 
in the whole process with an open mind. Um, you truly don't know where you're going to end up. You don't know the people that you're going to meet. You don't know who's going to impact you, um, but trust your gut in the process and things will work out. My turn. Um, um, so this was an interesting question because Tam Cod was my dream school, but it was definitely my reach school. Um, I said that I have family go here, but I actually had three generations. So my great grandfather, my grandfather, my dad all went to the same school. Um, so it was definitely something that like in the back of my heart, like if I got in, I was going. Um, and so all of that other stuff about like research, academics, clinics, they kind of fell behind because legacy was going to be such an important thing for me. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised that it also, a huge thing for me is community, having classmates that are going to support you and not be competitive. I think that was a huge thing that I was looking for and I found in TAMCOD and I also found in the faculty. Um, I think having a good class culture makes dental school doable and possible. And I think some schools um, struggle with that, but if your class and like you are an individual who like pushes to share resources and support one another, you can kind of find that anywhere as well. Um, but again, like TAMCOD, I, I loved it because I have this legacy. I have teachers who were in the same classmate as my dad, but I also have a teacher who taught my father. So I have a huge legacy at the school. So it's it's really fun to kind of see it through their eyes as it's grown and changed as well. Okay, so for me, um, I don't have any family um, that are in dentistry. I was the first one that chose dentistry and chose to go to dental school. Um, and one thing that I wish I'd done was, um, like Sam said, a lot more research. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that, like, yes, like, go to cheapest school. I'm sure all of us have heard it before. Go to the cheapest school, um, and the end, like, it doesn't matter. Like, you're all going to be a dentist. And, like, if you think about it, yes. Um, but I kind of also wish, because I do value the, like, process a lot, too. Um, I have learned to enjoy it now because I've been in school for a while since July, so I had time to adjust, but in the beginning, even though I had come with an open mind, I was a bit sad because I had let go of like my um, dream school because of the cost. And at first, like I was like, this isn't worth it. And like, even to this day, there's like a little part of me that really wishes like I maybe chose different but like it's not because like the school is horrible and stuff it's just like my personal like values and like um because the other school i had like a lot of connection i had like friends who were in the same class would have been in the same class as me um just things like that but um like uh, rachel said i do believe that things happen for a reason and um so i'm trying to like enjoy like you know like see the good parts of things um, and be positive throughout the whole journey. But I would, if I were to turn back time, like I, maybe I would still make the same choice, but um, I wish I had more like knowledge before. Like I knew the community more, like I knew about the things more. Luckily, like I came and the experience hasn't been like that, like horrible. The faculty's super nice. The curriculum's like doable. I've met like a lot of nice like classmates, but it would have been nice to like have that knowledge before. So it would have a little softer landing than like a boom, you know what I mean? Right, uh, thank you, Anji, Sam, Madeline and Rachel for all your great answers tonight. Um, we're gonna wrap it up about now. So on behalf of the students of dentistry team, well, thank you for joining us tonight and we'll stick around a bit if anyone has more questions. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day, guys. We really, really appreciate you guys and everything you had to say. So yes, thank for you. Having us. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for having us. Thanks, it was fun. Thank you, thank you guys. And if anyone has questions, um, feel free to share our contact info. Rachel, I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> I was to ask you. Yeah. Um, you said that you were a recipient of the NHSC scholarship. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, where, I was gonna ask, I've been having a hard time on their website trying to find the application. Yeah, so. It, like later in the year or something or? Yes, so um, the application opens in March-ish um, or April, depending on 
the year, I guess. Um, and you'll have about a month to a month and a half to work on it. Um, and we can go over like everything that's required. It's a pretty hefty application. It's like applying to dental school all over again. You need letters of recs and all that. Um, but it's totally worth it. <laughs> um, and it'll close in like, yeah, mid April, maybe May. Um, and then you wait all summer. You have no idea what's going to happen. You take out loans to prepare for your D1 year. Um, and then no surprise. I'll take yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you don't find out until September 30th. So they'll tell you anytime between like, I found out at the very end of August, but it can, some people found out up till September 30th. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Are the supplementals usually the same every year? Or is it like one supplemental usually? Um, there's three essay questions. I don't know if they're the same essay questions every year, um, but if they are, can definitely help you out with that. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.